demo. And the next demo is about, again, it's a cross domain, but it's about remediation. It's remediation, uh, auto remediation is basically uh, automation responding to alerts or events by executing a workflow or an action so that it can fix the problem or prevent the problem. And that's auto remediation. The other uh, aspect is also assist, troubleshooting assist, where events come in, uh, there may not be a, a solution for it, but also uh, automation could basically gather the required information and include it in a ticket or a Slack channel so that the time to fix the problem for any uh, anybody looking into that problem is reduced much. So these are the two key concepts here in this demo. And um, basically we have integrated integrations with uh, Splunk and Elasticsearch and many other monitoring systems as part of the Workflow Composer community integrations. So in this demo, we're getting events from a switch to Splunk. And Splunk, you can selectively only the actionable events that you have you want to uh, act, act on forward it to Workflow Composer. Workflow Composer is not a monitoring system. Selective events come into Workflow Composer triggered by Splunk, and and then based on the rules that Patrick explained, and the uh, using the information from the event itself, what's the message ID, what's the source IP, the interface IP, all that is taken into consideration by executing the rules Workflow Composer. Uh, maps an event to a workflow and executes the workflow. So completely customizable. It's completely can, customizable. Right. So I know my network. Yes. It's weird things. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I can customize my day to. Yes. Try, like you said, it, yeah. monitoring information gathering. Exactly. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. And workflow, what workflow does is it can do, it workflows include actions that can be configuration or troubleshooting or validation. So in this case, what we're doing is that we go and investigate the problem and then fix the problem and notify. Here comes the integration into processes in terms of notifying the team or maybe opening a ticket. Like Patrick mentioned, if a problem happens in the midnight, if the automation can handle it, uh, it can basically resolve the problem and log a ticket so that next day team can look into it. Can you just show the details? How is Splunk? Uh integration actually working? Do you have an app that you install on top of Splunk and that is sending ah, out I'll, the I'll show. Yeah, yeah, I'll show you. So the one is Workflow Composer has the concept of sensors. So it a sensor can basically, if a system does not, it cannot, there are two models, right? The, the, the event can come into the Workflow Composer by push or Workflow Composer can pull and get the events. So when it comes to Splunk, um, Splunk, you can, so this is, a, we have a simple dashboard integration to Splunk that shows you the events that are there, uh, but yeah, we have configured an alert that is basically link flap, whether link goes up and down. So you can configure Splunk to basically um, trigger a webhook. Yeah, I was gonna add there. Um, so there is an extreme app you can install on Splunk, but that is not required or needed for doing Splunk to workflow composer integration. It's just using regular Splunk alerts and sending webhooks to Workflow Composer. Okay, so yeah, so you using could, just onboard Splunk things. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't need to. You don't need to install the Extreme app on top of Splunk. You can just have okay. just a completely vanilla Splunk if you want to, and just add on that alert. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Can I add one other thing here? Um, so here we're using Splunk, and Lindsay just talked about how you really don't need to do anything different. It's a simple webhook, pushes it over to um, Workflow Composer. One of the key tenets that we thought when we looked at 
uh, our automation platform is. We did not want to force organizations to use specific tools. Every organization uses their own type of tools. You mentioned, you know, you know your own network, you have your own tools, your own processes. Um, we want to be able to be that glue that's in between, but also automate the heck out of networking for our gear. And so if you're a Splunk user or you use Nagios or you use whatever log aggregation tool or monitoring tool or OSS system, it doesn't matter. As long as there's a way to integrate with it, and it could be hopefully, ideally, through some sort of interface, some sort of API, but ultimately it doesn't have to be that. Um, but if there's a way to integrate with it, we can plug into it. And so that's our goal is to not force you out of the tools you know and love and uh, still yet provide that uh, across domain automation capability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just to kind of show you on the community of the Workflow Composer, there are many monitoring tools are integrated, but even if it is a specific monitoring tool that is not integrated, we have open interfaces to integrate that. So, so as part of this demonstration, I will to generate an event. I will uh, log into a switch, and Okay, hey, sorry. So there are two links here. Um, I will close, shut down one of the interfaces. So as you see, that triggered an event from the switch. And that went to Splunk, and Splunk triggered Workflow Composer. And then as part of the Workflow Composer workflow, that executes basically uh, notifies the users that a link went down, and also gets the, so here is the, an example of a, a workflow actually getting the state information from the switch and posting into the Slack channel. That it helps assisting a troubleshooting problem. and. And then it understands this link, the, this port has been shut down. So the workflow automatically tries to bring it up. After it is up, it kind of posts the interface stats and basically says, okay, so the mm -hmm. interface came back up. So no, no need to alert anybody. And it opens a JIRA ticket for the next day for the users to take a look. <laughs> So the JIRA ticket also includes all the um, information that was collected by the workflow. For next day for the users to kind of investigate what's the root cause. And so just to kind of, when the workflow event comes in, the rules are evaluated. Here is a, a simple rule. Basically, here we're saying if the event is coming from um, Splunk, it, it, if it is a link flap, it basically executes this workflow. And as part of the trigger, includes the information, such as what's the source of the event, the host, and interface information. So these rules are customizable by the uh, end users through UI or through directly using a metadata language. Does this come with any preloaded best practice fixes? So if you see high discards or something or anything, does it come with automated actions that are pre-ready? So the 
Automated actions, we provide a lot of samples and also a lot of triggers are also available uh, out of the box. The actions that customers do, it depends upon their processes. So it comes with all the nuts and bolts, they just need to turn it on. Thank you. Which is better than Python. <laughs> what did you say, Greg? Which is better than Python. Oh. Yeah. Right? Because you've got to sort of like spend three months learning Python and then working out how to master Ansible and then Ginger and mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And build Which is blah. still worth it, but yeah. Yeah, there's Here, a time you know, component. At this point, it's a bit more like uh, Microsoft Notepad. You know, there's something yeah. to get started with and you're on your way to Microsoft Word without mm -hmm. having to reinvent wheels. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's the that's what it is. Yes. We're talking about taking all the like this isn't necessarily and this is not an offense or a negative. This isn't groundbreaking technology. This is things that people have been doing. You're packaging it in in a way that's really useful to engineers uh, yeah, to use day one. It. Excuse me. They're extremely simple. Extremely simplifying. Extremely. Good work. Oh yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah. I mean, it's not like you, know you guys what, invented invented. You know what's innovative here? Right. The vendor actually is doing it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right? Yeah, this yeah, is a true. workflow tool That's that a true. vendor owns yep. and is attaching to their product. Okay. This is not something any other vendor is yep. doing at this level of, and this is easy for anybody with a modest level of competency, any self-respecting well, engineer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Any self-respecting engineer could pick up this tool and start doing this. Yeah. Not without having to spend six months learning. Like if you've never learned Python or in your life, or maybe you did Python ten years ago, in high school or you know your first year at university or something like that. You don't have to like wipe the slate clean and, and you know, that's where this starts. And yeah. you can you can walk into the manager's office and say, pay rise, please, look how awesome I was. <laughs> Sorry, I'll measure every every vendor product is measured on my success as, as a pay rise. Yeah. Right? The vendors aren't getting me a pay rise, no vendor, white box all the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. think, I think the key point to add to what you're saying is also that if you look at the state of the industry today, like networking engineers, 90% of them are users. So it's really a very small percentage who are tinkerers who would go and write their scripts and things mm -hmm. like that, number one. Number two, from a product lifecycle perspective, the vendor owning this, testing it, and you know, trying to support it is good because we've also seen some very smart customers who uh, you know, write some of their own infrastructure. So they start like cloud companies, but they very quickly become pregnant with burdening technology that they don't want to, mm -hmm. you know, you know, further anymore, and then you know it comes becomes a bottleneck to their business agility. Yep. And I think also the human factor. Yeah, I don't know. Bob runs to the server, wants to have the port configured, so he calls James, mm -hmm. and James has a bad day and uh, <laughs> does something stupid on the command line. Yeah, yeah. and next day I don't know. He calls somebody else. So with that. You have a consistency. You know that script was running, was running every day, yeah. and there will be no fat finger factor anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah very valid point. I think that's where it is. <laughs> when you have a lot of inputs, as you said, human errors basically cause a lot of issues. Right. Yeah. The less you make it, the more um, effective it is. So that basically concludes. And also, I think just to kind of summarize, in terms of uh, we take away the burden of writing a lot of things by the users, <coughs> by providing our automation suites, they are turnkey, they can be readily used. But the, the thing that we want is how it integrates into customers' environment and processes. That's where also a lot of integrations exist, but it just needs to be last mile connections that they need to do. So it's not amount of work they need to do is much less if they are starting from scratch, building custom scripts, a lot of them do that, but they become very heavy and uh, a lot of work on their part. So a lot of that can be eliminated using the platform and also community tools and integrations, as well as the what we provide as part of the automation suites. Altogether, the work reduces dramatically. Yeah, basically, you know, so provisioning is something that is the first thing that comes to everybody's mind, but that's not exactly the only thing we are doing. Uh, as you see, like here, like the Ram men mentioned, like automation suites, we are providing that that can do, like, you know, for networking infrastructure, the provisioning, it has like troubleshooting, mediation also. But our goal is also to consistently, consistently continue to provide these sensors and actions to help them expand outside, like, you know, to the periphery of the network and be able to integrate into like, you know, this uh, uh, Splunk, Jira, other analytics, monitoring systems, and things like that. 
And so, you know, whatever is top of their mind, try to provide them a little bit more flexibility to go and automate those. Yeah. So, thank you. That concludes this demo.